Hey, good morning, everybody. It is so great to be back with you all here for the morning briefing on Friedman Adventures. Thanks for spending a few moments out of your day with me. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Wow, I'm telling you, there's so much to be optimistic about, so much to be grateful for as we move up on our nation's birthday. July the 4th is right there out on the horizon. I mean by being grateful that we live in this great country. We've got men and women who dedicate their lives to protecting us and make sure freedom reigns on forever here in the United States of America. And then the fishing, of course, yellowfin tuna, dorado, bluefin biting again, wide open white sea bass. There's so much that looks so good that we're gonna cover on today's report. And then that four letter word. I hesitate to use it on a family show, but I will do it. Wind. It's in the forecast. We'll talk about that and so much more on this morning's morning briefing. All right, everybody. Man, there's a lot of anchovy up and down our coast, which bodes well for Albuquerque. I'll get into that in one moment. But first of all, I'll take you way down south to Cabo San Lucas, where our good friend, part of the Friedman family, Sean Morgan, who ran boats up here for so long, he's down there in Cabo San Lucas, and he has been reporting horrible fishing down there. He said it's just been really, really slow. But it's starting to change in Cabo a little bit. In fact, they've seen some blue marlin here recently, and who doesn't love the excitement of seeing a blue marlin slash around the surface, feeding on bait as you roll up on it. You hope you get a jig strike or you slide a bait back to it. That's exciting stuff. Sean says way out there are some yellowfin tuna and pretty good fishing, but it's a long run to get to them. But it's been really slow down in Cabo, and it is starting to pick up. So thank you, Sean, for that. He sent along that video of that blue marlin feeding on the surface and things are looking up down in Cabo. Not there yet, but just like everywhere else, it's been a slow start to the season. Here we go. Hopefully it's going to get going and we'll keep our eyes on that. Now down in Ensenada, our friend Arnie Mann, who runs a ponga down there, keeping me in constant contact with what's going on. They're seeing bluefin that don't want to bite. Hopefully the light switch is going to go on. We've got some information on that for you here right now also things are certainly starting to head in the right direction on the bluefin tuna bite. Those guys down in Ensenada have been scouring offshore and still there's a occasional really good catch trolling around with the mag 12s. That has been the preferred way to get the job done down there and those guys continue to do that. They're also fishing locally. We'll talk about that in one minute. Albacore. All right. The clock is definitely ticking because sometime in July you got to see Albacore or actually I would say around the 4th of July things will start to go down. That's when those fish traditionally used to show up. Haven't seen them really in huge numbers I think to since 2008. Well that was a big and then we had other subsequent years that were decent but we haven't seen them for a while. We've got our fingers crossed that this will be the year. As we look at this triangle from Ensenada to San Diego we see this 75 mile area of the most perfect albacore water you could ever ask for. Tommy Holland, who has been working his fingers to the bone, staying in touch with the commercial guys and monitoring this, convinced it's gonna happen. Earlier this year, Bobby Taft on the Top Gun 80 said he thought it was going to happen. We remain convinced that we're gonna see Albacore in either Northern Baja or SoCal or both. We remain convinced. And last year when we made that prediction, this time of year, it was just a no-go. It was done. Water was too hot and albacore are not going to swim into that water. This year, more, more anchovies, which is the feed they love, and perfect water. As I mentioned, that triangle looking really good. So enough guys seem to be kind of moving around right now where we might snag one. I don't think anybody's going to run out to the worm bank and start trolling jigs around. Fuel so expensive and doing that kind of thing is you know, a real shot in the dark. People want to kill you if you ran out there and trolled up three oceanic bonita. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed and be patient as things continue to develop. So let's we'll take a look at this bluefin tuna out of, well, let's just talk in general, okay? So the Intrepid, and how can you beat those guys? I mean, they do such a great job on that boat. Bill Cavanaugh, 
He's been on the Freeman Adventures podcast. In fact, one of the most watched podcasts was with my friend Bill. He does such a great job. The crew on the Intrepid, so professional. So they went up to the Channel Islands and had added on the White Sea Bass on their most recent, I think it was a five-day trip, not sure about that. They went up there, had sea bass. They tanked up with squid, had four tanks of squid, and then they ran out to the banks where there had been a signal of some fish out there around Tanner Cortez, mostly Tanner Bank. In fact, the tribute was out there, and while he didn't slam them, he had a yellowtail, a halibut, bluefin, copious amounts of nice, beautiful rockfish, he saw them. He saw that they were on the bank. So this same similar bluefin tuna pattern is manifesting itself again this year, namely starting out down there around Ensenada and below Long Range Roads earlier, earlier, earlier as we were reporting. We're seeing it, and then it's going up and moving out toward Clemente and ultimately out there on Tanner. He went out there and just had at it. Wide open night bite. So the tribute saw him in the day, and I'm sure that those guys talked or Bill put two and two together. Okay, it's there. It didn't bite in the day. Is it time for it to bite at night? Went out there. Limits a 40 to 80 pound bluefin tuna. Biting the knife jigs at night like those 300 gram jigs. Just great fishing out there and high hopes for everybody. I mean, that gets everybody excited because LA Orange County based boats as well as San Diego boats can get out there to Tanner on day and a half trips and really have at it. But you want to make sure you're planning a trip with the nighttime bite in mind because that is what is going to make a difference to you. Now, I told you that four letter word is going to enter in, especially around the 4th of July. If the forecast holds, it's going to get very nasty out there. Right now, it's going to be breezy. Long range big boats, I've no doubt, can fish that no problem at all for the next few days, but it's going to be breezy. Nasty conditions. Do bluefin bite in those kind of conditions? Heck yeah, they bite in that kind of condition. Albacore, all that offshore stuff will bite. And now that it's on the bank, you know, Sean on the, uh, Sean Roberts from the Pride postulated the theory that they get around that bait, they get comfortable, they start to feed. And as Sean said just the other day in that interview I did with him, hey, everybody be patient. This is nothing new. Bluefin not biting for a stretch. This happens all the time. So is that just a flash in the pan or is it going to continue to bite? Hopefully it's on the chew now and will continue. You need that heavy tackle. I've been telling you that for a long time. I know those long range boys all have heavy tackle, but if you're planning on going out there to the banks, you still need it. I know it's mostly 40 to 80 pounds. You can get away with fishing 50, 60 pounds on that stuff. But when you're fishing those big knife jigs, you need the 80 to 130 with two speed reels to make it happen. Nice shot out there. Hopefully it's going to continue out of San Diego one day trips. And we can kind of bunch these two trips together, those 6 a.m. Well, now let me separate those, okay? So one day trips that can get you know, 70 miles, 80 miles, even further than that on a one day trip. It gives you some fishing time. Finding kelps, some of them loaded up with nice yellowtail, six to 15 pound fish. Most of it's like, you know, that eight to 12 pound grade, nice grade of kelp patty fish, but up to 20 pounds. There are some nice big fish out there in that neck of the woods. And we continue also to see more and more of that warm water stuff flush up the Baja Peninsula. It's truly exciting time. That warm water in tight, that cooler water we described to you for Albuquerque offshore, that gives you the perfect scenario. More yellowfin, more Dorado. No huge numbers yet. Picking at it, seeing it, getting ready to happen. And then that four letter word is going to get in there also. Again, that wind. So we'll see what happens. But for right now, guys are still getting it this morning. It sounds pretty good. The Ranger 85 down there off Colinette. Now that's at least day and a half trip territory. You want to get down there. Royal Star is there. I just talked to Diego Nuno, who's the deckhand on board. He's down there. They're getting some of that stuff. So yellowfin tuna, Dorado, seeing some significant schools down there. One of the better scores, Polaris Supreme recently with 50 plus on the YFT. So that is coming together and we are excited about that because that warm water, wherever it leads up here into the LA Orange County area, those fish will follow right up that zone. As long as there's feed and conditions that they like, it will be the perfect scenario. Watch the four letter word, however, as that will play and have an impact on that zone a little bit later on. Those guys are still getting them, so hopefully that's going to continue. 
the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. boats, some of them peeled off and started fishing the Coronado Islands. In fact, you saw what the San Diego did. They had, I think, 14 white sea bass the one day and then 28 white sea bass the next day. I might be off on those numbers a little bit, but you get the idea. They were catching these sea bass on a fly line sardine, mostly like 10 to 15 pound WSBs, but WSBs, I mean, at the Coronado Islands, that is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. And there's significant amounts of yellowtail zooming around the islands. Now, the reality is that we haven't had a big hit here recently. In fact, only two yellowtail in the San Diego, no white sea bass yesterday. Grande was out there, uh, Barracuda, a few yellows zooming around there, um, bass fishing decent, some rockfish. So we've got that going on right now, and hopefully those islands are gonna pick up. Seeing some improvement with regard to conditions, seeing enough yellowtail at the island, so that could definitely come into play here very, very soon. Other guys are staying offshore, and even in that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. zone, we're picking at the Dorado, we're seeing yellowfin tuna, there's kelp patty yellowtail. I mean, I think we go back to what Captain Eddie Leland, who's part of the Freeman Adventure family, said, it's early, okay? And the way this is all unfolding right now just mimics the years when we had that cooler water that La Nina type of experience, which we are in right now. So there's no denying that with that cold water offshore, cool water, I should say. Albacore, by the way, love that 63, 64, 65, 66 degree water. Start getting up above that and they get a little uncomfortable. You get anywhere near 70 degrees and they are out of here in search of cooler water. Sets up perfectly right now so you can hear what is going on. And on those trips, you know, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or one day trips. I know those bluefin have been very fickle, but they're around, there's so many of them. There's those different grades of fish, 40 to 80, 200 plus. Still recommend you bring some heavy tackle. We'll let you know when that light switch goes on on that bluefin. Hopefully it'll start biting in the daytime, but there are some alternatives available to all of you. So we've got fish from at least down there around Collinet, which is those guys are fishing 90, 100 miles, some a little bit further, 120, but mostly 90 to 100 miles. We've got that flooding all the way up. And I'm talking about tropical and subtropical species like yellowfin and species like that. Fluorocarbon leaders, definitely. And you know we love Opsin USA here. www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout. That is Friedman Adventures FA. You'll get a free gift and a handwritten note from Greg. His little fingers are about to fall off. He's been sending so many of those notes. Greg, we love you. And Greg, did you check out Tino Valentine's plug for you the other day? He loves Opsin fluorocarbon. You might want to check that out, my friend. All right, taking a look uh, at the islands now. We've covered that offshore. Todo Santos off Ensenada, Barracuda, Yellowtail, Calico Bass. One day good, one day not so good. Not a huge amount of Yellowtail. A few picking here and there, but decent barracuda, and there's some bonita racing around there also, so that is good news. We kind of covered that Coronado Island area for you already. Um, the more boat pressure that gets on it, it seems like the counts are going down, but somebody will pop off a good one, hopefully today. San Diego, the Grande, uh, Liberty, the Mission Bell, the Malahini, all those guys, such capable, good fishermen who put in a hard day's work every single day, and some are now kind of in between the island or offshore because that offshore thing is just trying to develop. It's trying to happen on that yellowfin and Dorado. So we're keeping our eyes on that for you very closely. We'll just talk about Catalina right now. Catalina is trying to straighten out and then you get the four letter word coming up here a little bit later. But right now, the freelance over there had extraordinarily great bonita fishing. Really wide open bonita, had limits of bonita. Nothing wrong with that. We've seen the pursuit recently with tan yellow tail over there. There's yellows, there's good calico bass fishing, mostly shorts, however, but good calico bass fishing, yellow tail. There hadn't been any big sea bass hits for sport boats lately, but some of the private boys still getting them at Cat with some really good scores. So that looms as a possibility also, and some really good barracuda. In fact, the Freelance had 60 barracuda, nice big ones, so 60 legal fish. So nothing wrong with that kind of scenario. And hopefully that is going to continue. And then, and, oh, and then at San Clemente Island, the sea lion's still a pain in the neck, but there is some really good 
yellowtail sign out there. Still the occasional white sea bass. And I'm telling you, a flurry is possible. Some halibut out there. Decent calico bass fishing. Bonita roaming around. That looks good. And then we'll just group everybody else, like Santa Barbara, San Nicolas, Colmeny. I'll talk about that in general. Um, really good fishing, especially those northern islands. That place, like Nick, looks really good. There's some great yellowtail fishing. Amigo, 12 guys out of 22nd Street Landing. Mark Paisano Jr. and crew. And Mark Sonata was out there. Mark, you know how much I love you. You know, when I'm whispering about you in my sleep at night, my wife gets nervous. But calm down. I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm still dedicated to her. I'm sorry, Mark, to break to you. Mark Sonata is a good friend of mine. Dex on board the Amigo and does such a great job. Nice hit for those boys yesterday. Freedom, two halibut, 26 yellowtail. You saw Tino Valentine here. And the Fury with 18 yellowtail yesterday. I believe at San Clemente Island, not positive on that one, but some nice shots going on. No question about that. So high hopes that that is gonna continue to head in the right direction. And then what can I tell you about the Channel Islands? That bite is revved up. It's really, really good right now. Outstanding fishing going on up there. Several boats limited out on white sea bass. I know they're dreading that four letter word because it's coming probably, these are forecasts, so I'm not trying to get anybody to not go fishing or anything like that, but my job is to inform you and we see it. We see that wind coming here shortly. In the meantime, however, man, the usual suspects, Endeavor, all those guys up there getting good hits on the white sea bass. And I got to dine on the most delicious white sea bass you could ever imagine because of this guy, KJ, who reported some great fishing on the CJ the other day, and they were getting them again. Yes, in Mirage, 12 guys, 36 white sea bass. Uh, CJ with a big day yesterday. KJ, I mentioned his stuff on our report, those dart jigs, which are working really good on the white sea bass. And the guy goes completely out of his way drives to 22nd Street Landing because I mentioned jokingly, KJ, I'd sure love a piece of that white sea bass, drives, goes way out of his way, comes over there and presents me with this gorgeous couple of nice, beautiful pieces of WSB. KJ, thank you so much. And Mag 12 Baits, they've been working super, super good up there in the Channel Islands. Really great fishing going on in that neck of the woods. Let me take you up the coast now and start you down there around Ensenadas. There's Barracuda, there's a little bit of sand bass, a little bit of calico bass moving into the San Diego area. Seems like rock fishing in the morning for the sports and then they get out and pick away at the bass. Sometimes pretty darn good, nothing to scoff at, that is for sure. Moving you up, same thing there around Dana, up here, LA Orange County Bass Boats. Victory, he's been on it, man. Long Beach sport fishing. That guy's been working his tail off. Limits of bass yesterday, mostly sand bass. Nothing wrong with that. Western Pride, by the way, we don't want to skip by them. They had a really great day yesterday. 82 bass, 15 of those were sand bass. The rest, calico bass, you do the math. But once again, what makes a huge difference is anchovies. When they get it in the bait, man, that is the, the light switch that turns those fish on. And when you're fishing anchovy, you go to lighter line. I like the fluorocarbon and you take your time to choose a really good hot bait. Not one with a bloody nose or eyeballs that look like uh, your anchovy's been out a little too late in the nightclubs. You wanna choose a good hot bait, one that's really difficult to catch. Put it on there and get it out as soon as possible. Drop it on the deck, forget it. You don't get a bite for a minute or two, change your bait. All those things are super necessary for good calico bass fishing. And 12 pound, Floro, you're gonna get bit all day long if you do all the rest of that. That is a great way to get it done. How about that Redondo special yesterday with 72 Barracuda. Nice shot there on the gar. So there's gar biting in that neck of the woods. Up there in the um, Channel Island area like Ventura Island Spirit and the California. Those boys up there, uh, if they're not, especially Island Spirit, out catching some sea bass at the islands, they're fishing the beach for a mix of sand and calico bass, not bad at all, and uh, as well as some rockfish and that kind of thing. And up there in Santa Barbara, we continue to see a shot of barracuda. There's some private guys who've been doing that, calico bass, and of course, Santa Barbara Sea Landing, very good on the bottom fish. You'll, they'll provide you with that. Patriots sword fishing up there out of Burgess. They're starting to get some wind already, but they've had great 
bottom fishing, no question about it. Along our beaches in SoCal, we continue to see some pretty darn good surf fishing with some yellowfin croaker here down at Bolsa Chica. Big fish bait and tackle right up the street here where you can get all kinds of natural baits in great surf fishing intel as well as um, tackle that you might need. And they have all tackle for offshore and everything else. Big fish right on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway. Corvina fishing, picking up, looking much better. Um, you know, I remember, I don't know when it was, maybe six years ago, um, 4th of July here in Surfside and surrounding areas. 4th of July, man, you could not freaking throw a chrome crocodile and wind on it without a wide open bite on the yellowfin croaker. And that was back in one of those normal years. I forget how long ago it was, probably 30 years ago, the way I lose track of time. But it was, you know, somewhere within the last eight years or so with me being in China and traveling around, I lose track of that. But I'm hoping that's what we're looking at. It's been a while since I've been down here and done that, so I need to get my butt out here, throw that crocodile because it's time for that to happen. High tide today after 12 noon, so I like that window, that four hour window once again like two hours before the high till two hours after. On the low, it's a low tide right now. Some of these guys still catch fish and uh, we also uh, see decent Corvina fishing and you can pick off a halibut by throwing a lucky crab. No question about that. All right, there's so much to be grateful for in this place we live in, the United States of America. Fishing is really coming on, but unfortunately, I mean, that four letter word has been a pain in the neck all spring and now in the early summer and it's going to be a real pain here in coming days if the forecast holds we'll pray for some kind of a miracle where that doesn't happen all right thank you so much for joining me this lovely morning really really appreciate it my friends fishing on the upswing things are looking good if we do get that win then after that i think it's going to be good there's valentino walking by buenos dias me hermano valentino great guy always get to say good morning to him all right folks once again kj thanks for going out of your way that is deeply deeply appreciated it says a lot about you thank you very much thanks to you all the members of the friedman family when i get stuck with an answer on our podcast you come through with the right answer israel and several other guys albert potts i can't thank you enough i'm gonna jump down in your place one of these times very, very soon down there near Rosarito. And I should tell you that we are making plans for a really great Christmas in Baja, California, where we will be giving out thousands of items to people who really need your help. And once again, when you talk about the USA, my parents taught me from a young age that one of the things about the people who live in this country is their generosity in terms of helping others. And that makes us really, really special in this world. And that makes you really, really special. All of you have donated items. You're gonna see that play out this coming winter down in Baja or fall, whenever we get down there and hand it out. And I can't thank you enough for everything you guys do for us, for our soaring statistics and everything else. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me this morning. And we'll see you again here on Friedman Adventures really, really soon. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,